Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I want to share with you the books and resources that we use for our little mini sea turtle unit. This was a very short unit lasting only a couple of days. I've got some beautiful picture books here to show you as well as some of the other projects that we did for this unit. So the first things that I want to show you are the four books that we had that were specifically on sea turtles. The first one is called Moon's Messenger and this is a story about a young child who sees a sea turtle on the shore and she travels on the sea turtle throughout the the world the planet the ocean and it's it's her tale of seeing what's going on some things are environmental uh, challenges that the animals are facing because of the human interaction and uh, other heavier topics that you may want to uh may want to present to your children in a way that doesn't cause too much fear. But overall, I found this to be a fabulous picture book that I love, love, love the illustrations. They're just these really beautiful kind of, the tones are all really gorgeous and these greens and browns, I really loved it. The, the theme and the concept I feel is very adult. And while I completely celebrate the theme, I also am very cautious of bringing some of these heavier topics down to my younger children. This unit was done for my 8-year-old daughter and my 13-year-old son. And while my 13-year-old can understand these concepts and not be so... Um, so depressed about the state of the environment, for some children and for young children, sometimes these topics can be really heavy. And I want to celebrate our achievements and our conservation efforts more than making us feel heavy for my children, making them feel heavy and uh, fearful and uh, unduly responsible for the problems we're facing in the environment. So that's that's uh, my <laughs> two cents on this topic area, and that's just, be you know, that's, that's just my opinion uh, uh, about about heavy topics like this. I do also want to mention that this book is super awesome for other reasons. It's made with stone paper. This is new to me. The the texture of the paper is super awesome. It, it's in between a fabric and a paper. It feels really good, and uh, it's made with 80% lime powder and 20% recyclable resin and it's a hundred or 100% recyclable and it's photodegradable so super cool I, I love when companies make that extra effort it's just really beautiful anyway I highly recommend this book super gorgeous and if you find that your children are a little bit sensitive to the topics I would just use it for art inspiration and make up your own story the green sea turtle, this one was packed with information. The illustrations aren't quite as gorgeous as Moon's Messenger, but still beautiful none the same, nonetheless. And it's just, it has a lot, we, we were able to take a lot of information from this book to use for our, our lessons. And I'm going to show you what we did in a little bit. We did some trivia cards inspired by the Professor Noggins games and we did use this book quite a bit for the information that we needed in order to come up with those questions. So highly recommend this this book as well. I love picture books like this that give a ton of information in a super easy, digestible way. It doesn't feel heavy. It doesn't feel like it's too much. It's a beautiful story. It takes you through the whole life cycle of a turtle. I just think it's really well done. The Green Sea Turtle, I believe I got this book from the library bookstore for about a quarter. It's kind of split into two different stories. That's at least the way that it feels for me. Uh, this first part is called Turtles in the Sea, and then you have the second part where uh, it talks about the baby turtles and, and, and how humans have helped preserve them from both what we do as well as what, um, you know, animals are, <laughs> the predators. Uh, it's, it's delightful. It gave us the information we needed and, uh, you know, again, got it for a super deep di discount. Turtle, Turtle, Watch Out. This is a really beautifully illustrated picture book and it goes through all of the, uh, challenges that a baby turtle is going to face as it grows until it reaches maturity and, and can uh, mate and have a fam family of its own <laughs> in a sense and so it goes through things that are natural to a turtle's environment predators but then it also goes through all the things that we have done to to complicate its survival but what I really really love about this book is that 
is that immediately when a challenge is presented, like for instance, this plastic bag in the ocean that looks like a jellyfish that the turtle is going to go eat and then it can suffocate on or it can, it can't digest that obviously. As soon as that problem is presented, it, it, it immediately talks about what this, maybe not exactly what the solution is, but how it was remedied within the book. So you never feel like you're leaving heavy. You feel like you have read this and you feel good and light and that you trust humanity and that you have hope. And that's really important for me with young children, especially. And so I really, really like how this book has presented those challenges in a, in a, in a solution oriented way. And of course the illustrations are beautiful. So I highly recommend this book too. The next books I want to show you only had a little bit of information on the topic that we were studying. And so I wouldn't go out and buy them specifically for this unit, but they're really beautiful books anyway that you might consider owning. The first one is Animalium. We've used this one a little bit uh, throughout our nature units, but as I have found with some of these books, the sometimes the topics are like it's covering all of like everything about the animal kingdom. And so the information is going to be really minimal and you may not even find the information that you need for the particular topic that you're studying. So it's really minimal, but I love the illustrations. We did not use any of these illustrations as inspiration for our art this time around and we didn't really use the content that much, but I did pull it for this unit. Uh, another book I thought I'd find information for this unit was called Nature Anatomy. It turned out that there wasn't anything on sea turtles, at least not that I saw. And so we ended up not using this one. Uh, this one, the big book of the blue, this is a new edition for us. And this is going to cover a lot of different topics uh, related to the ocean. And there was a section on sea turtles and so we did read it and a lot of the information that was in here happened to be in other resources that we had so it wasn't anything new but it was nice to have that repetition and it has these kind of cool computer type uh sort of like uh cutouts of you know like when you piece together uh cutting and pasting <laughs> type of art. Uh, that's kind of the feel that I have in this book. At first glance, I found this book to be super overwhelming, has a lot, just a lot going on. But once I actually dove into the, this book and started reading it, it really wasn't that overwhelming. The content is very minimal, kind of gives you a nice overview in a slightly more cohesive way than this book, Nature Anatomy. I love this book, has gorgeous illustrations, and it does have quite a bit of information, but I never found it to be enough for any of our units. I found sometimes the information was a little bit disjointed in the sense that I couldn't just read it cover to cover, not cover to cover, just through a whole entire section and feel like we could retain the information too much. And maybe that will be the case with this as well, but it seems like it, it had a, a, a bit more flow uh, from topic to topic. So, uh, and plus, you know, gorgeous picture book. So <laughs> why not add it to, uh, to your collection? Uh, Rivers and Oceans, we use this book for uh, the projects that we did for both this sea turtle unit as well as our whale unit. We did two demonstration type projects in this book. I love this book. I There are, uh, there are others in the series as well, and I find them to be really superb in how they present the information. The illustrations are, are really beautiful and very educational and the projects that they offer in this book are generally really easy to do and they're very educational. They're usually demonstrations as opposed to experiments and I find them to be just top notch. And usually you can, you can do these with the stuff that you probably already have around the house. So the two projects we did was this closed system plant, uh, type thing. And we are not done with this project only because our plants are not done growing. And so this will be more of a long-term project that extends this unit. And then the other one that we did was this iceberg project. And, um, and that was super easy. Uh, you know, it just takes as long as it takes to freeze a block of ice. Otherwise the experiment or rather the demonstration goes by really quickly. Professor Noggin's Life in the Ocean card game. We love, love, love these card games so much that it actually inspired the project that we did for this unit. It comes with easy questions as well as hard questions and really beautifully illustrated front 
uh, the, the card the card fronts are really beautifully illustrated so you could use this as art inspiration and then the questions we like to play this throughout the unit but we find it more challenging at the start of the unit before we actually learn a lot of content we're usually getting a lot of the questions wrong but by the end of the unit we feel pretty confident and we can even challenge ourselves with some of the harder questions now this is a general ocean card game so there weren't i think there may have only been one card um anyway on on sea turtles in particular but we still we still really enjoyed it and we have played it for our ocean unit in the past and definitely pulled it out for this unit as well and enjoyed it so we made our own nature inspired trivia cards let me pull the ones just for this unit uh, these ones we did our artwork on the front just like the professor noggins games and then on the back we wrote our questions they're trivia based questions uh, true and false fill in the blank multiple multiple choice and then we laminated them to protect them and we play it the same way we would play the professor noggins games my son has a set and i have a set and we try to challenge each other with questions that are challenging <laughs> so that we can make it interesting and he's 13 so um and my daughter is eight she did not do this project she did start it um but it was frustrating i found it frustrating the, drawing a sea turtle for some reason was really difficult for me and she found it frustrating too so her four cards are basically just variations on the ocean and she did not write questions so uh so we went ahead and uh, did our questions based on the resources that we had. We tried to make them challenging. I'll read the questions to my son. If he gets it correct, he gets to keep the card. He does the same to me. We've challenged ourselves by having to get all the answers correct on one card in order to get the card. And that's just to kind of add a little bit of variety to our game. So those are the this was how we we represented our learning for this unit we have our artwork as well as our written work and that's just because a lot of times with our science units we would do a lot of projects a lot of art a lot of hands-on things but we didn't end up having a lot of content to show for it in the form of writing and so this way we get something that is written but also it becomes something that we can use over and over again in the future and uh, we just really love looking at our, our projects and enjoying them long after the unit is over. There's actually one more thing or one more set of books I want to show you. And these are all of the potential read alouds or assigned reading that I pulled for this unit. Now, these are all uh, middle school and high school level books. And that's because I have a 13 year old doing this uh, unit as well. I do have a couple of books that would would suit a younger student. Island of the Blue Dolphins would definitely suit maybe a fifth, fourth, fifth, sixth grader. And Robinson Crusoe, I think, would also suit a younger student. And one more book that I don't have handy right here is Swiss Family Robinson. That's another one that would make a really easy read aloud. And it would also, for a younger student, I think, be pretty easy to read. A younger student as in upper elementary and junior high. Uh, but my son ended up choosing Island of the Blue Dolphins as his assigned reading for this unit. This, if I had more time for the unit, I would just read this aloud so that everyone could enjoy it. He oscillated between choosing Moby Dick and Island of the Blue Dolphins, and after looking at a few pages and kind of trying to read through it, he just found that this was just not going to work so well for this unit. So we opted to do the audio version of Moby Dick, and I think that that's going to suit all of us a lot better. So hopefully... Uh, that works. Now, I haven't read this book, so I can't recommend it one way or another uh, for your students. I do know that it is high school level or higher. <laughs> and so if you've got young students, just totally skip it. Uh, for young students, Robinson Crusoe, Swiss Family Robinson, and Island of the Blue Dolphins, I think would all work really well. If for older students, and I haven't read these books to comment on them, but these are the books that we had within our homeschool library that I think all have like an ocean theme that in some way or another I think would work well with any kind of ocean unit. Uh, Contiki, Jack London's The Sea Wolf, Carolyn Myers, The Adventures of Charlie Darwin, and the Cruise of the Arctic Star by Scott O'Dell. My uh, second son, who's 17 now, read this uh, in high school for his English class. And so that's why we had the book on hand. And I thought that that would work well. I got this one for my 13-year-old a couple years ago. I had heard good things about Carolyn Meyer's uh, fiction, you know, historical fictions. 
but he ended up finding this one kind of boring and didn't finish the book. So I can only just speak about these two books. These books are just classics that I had in my library and I thought that they would work well. And so uh, if you, again, have an older student or you decide to read these books aloud, that might work. Okay, the last thing I want to show you are some little props that we had for this unit. We had a couple of sea turtles here that we picked up when we were in Hawaii. And this is uh, because we had seen sea turtles in the wild and because we had visited those islands, uh, we decided to, I decided to start collecting materials for a sea turtle unit. And then we had one more sea turtle here who lost its head. And this was just this, you know, the expandable material, like you stick this in water and it expands. Got this from the Dollar Tree and I need to remember not to buy cheapy things like this because this just ends up in the garbage and obviously we don't want to do that so if you do want to get a plastic type uh, model um, I think Safari Toys has a better quality uh, um, what do you call it <laughs> plastic and there's actually one more thing I completely forgot to show you Okay, so I actually forgot to show you one thing that I meant to show you when we we're putting this unit together, and that is this kit called Wool Pets. This is the Sea Turtle Felting Kit. This is for needle felting, and we've previously done our sea turtles, and I forgot to show you this. This would make a really great hands-on project, really great handwork project for uh, ages about eight or nine and up. These kits come with everything you need in order to make two or three sea turtles. It comes with the needles, comes with the instructions as well as all of the wool. It only doesn't come with a full foam pad in order to do your needle felting on and I do recommend that you get one of those so that you don't damage your needles. All right, I think that is everything. Don't forget to check the link down in the description box below so that you can check out the blog post that accompanies this video. You're gonna find more pictures and information about the books and resources that we use for this unit. If you wanna see some of the other projects we did for our sea turtle unit, you can tap on the screen right now. And don't forget that if you wanna see what our homeschool is looking like on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.